Okay, last night was WWE's Extreme Rules 2011 pay-per-view summit. So just give you a quick recap, quick review, and just my thoughts of what happened on the show. Uh, first off, we got Randy Orton, and he beat CM Punk in a last man standing match. The match was pretty decent, in fact, and um, yeah, both guys carried the weight in it. But one thing that it took away from the match, I thought, was uh, at the end when Orton won, uh, I think he won with an uh, RKO off the top rope, if I remember correctly, or like off the second rope, Punk was on the top rope, was... <clears throat> he struggled to his feet, but then as soon as he won, he like lifted his arms up in the air like nothing was wrong. And then he realised what had happened, and he started selling again afterwards. But just that brief moment where he stopped selling just was like... I was on a high, and then it just like made me crash a little bit. Like, Ugh. like he just ruined the match for me. But yeah, it was a good match, all in all. Um, next up, we got Kofi Kingston versus Sheamus in a tables match for the US title. This was a special match added on there by uh, Teddy Long. Um, Kofi Kingston got the win, great finish to the match, um, Kofi was on the top rope and he jumped to the outside, Sheamus was standing up, it was sort of like a cross body splash through the table, it was an excellent finish I thought, Kofi Kingston the new US champion, um, great little, great bunch of spots in this match where Kofi would be whipped into a table and he'd like quickly jump into the ropes or something like that, use his little Spider-Man sort of gimmicky stuff that he does, um, yeah it was quite cool, um, yeah another good match. Cole and Swagger beat King and J.I. in a country whipping match. This was actually pretty decent, I thought. It was a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. Cole came down to the ring in a bubble wrap costume, which I thought was genius. Then uh, King stripped it off and then started whip uh, punching him. He quickly uh, ducked out or tagged in Swagger. Uh, the match ended with uh, a quick roll-up. Cole on Jim Ross, I think it was. It um, wasn't great. It was a bit disappointing that... Uh, King and JR didn't win the match because obviously the feud isn't over just yet so we're going to see probably another match at the next pay-per-view including Michael Cole which is a bit, a bit lame isn't it um, another thing that's annoying me about all this is that um, what's he called Booker T Booker T's on a commentary and he says um, right there quite a lot right there oh see him do that right there and now he's going to do this right there and then this right there it's like really really annoying right there yeah, Booker T's not that good on commentary, and I'd like to see Cole back on commentary, because he does a good job on commentary, and he's not good in the ring. Anyway, next up, we got Rey Mysterio beating Cody Rhodes in a false count anywhere match, even though the fall ended up being in the ring, I think. A decent match, you know, they went all around the crowd, they went through the backstage and all that stuff. Um, yeah, nothing spectacular happened in this match, it's just very, your standard Rey Mysterio match, you know, you know what to expect from a good match. Uh, next up, you got Layla beating Michelle in a loser leaves WWE match. This was a, a good women's match, in all honesty. Um, nothing spectacular to say about it apart from the end. <coughs> Michelle hit the uh, faith breaker, or whatever she calls it, on Layla. Goes to the pin, 1 2. Layla turns it over into another pin and gets the 1 2 3. So Layla sort of nulls with Michelle's finish, which makes Layla look quite strong, makes Michelle look quite weak. And then while Michelle's lying in the ring, Karma comes down. And I'd just done a video about Karma, which I was about to upload sometime during this week, with me excited about her about to debut, and now there's no point in me uploading it, because now she's already debuted, so I'm going to have to do another video about it now, I suppose. But yeah, Karma was excellent, she came down, uh, Michelle really sold it, Michelle looked legitimately terrified, then Karma comes in, she could have done with doing a few more moves to her, but she just did the implant buster on Michelle, and then uh, laughed and then stopped, then laughed and stopped, and then walked out, it was quite good, it really reminded me of... Um, Kane's debut and oh I've got to give a shout out to I can't remember his name I think it's, it's either Vin WO or Sinestro CW they both comment on, on my videos so I'll give you a shout out to both of you but one of them said oh do you think Karma's going to debut or I think Karma's going to debut I think they said and they said it could be like Kane's debut and I was like nah it's not going to happen sort of giving it all that but uh, yeah it did happen so yeah shout out props to you for calling it because that's exactly how it went down she came down it was just like Kane's debut it was really menacing the <coughs> Michelle in the ring didn't know what to do and Kane's debut was against Taker Karma's debut was coming in against Michelle like little similarities there but uh, yeah Karma just battered her and then went away then we got Christian beating Alberto Del Rio in a ladder match this is a good match um, it didn't really keep my attention that much but one thing I did really like about it was at the end uh, Del Rio was just about to grab the title uh, Edge is there honking the horn. Someone had also said, oh, I think Edge is going to turn up. I was like, oh, Edge might turn up, but I'm not too sure. They also said Lita was going to turn up. I said that was bullshit. Um, but yeah, Edge honks the horn from Del Rio's car. Del Rio like, sort of stops and looks at him. In that time, Christian manages to push Del Rio off the ladder. He goes flying into the arms of um, 
Ricardo Rodriguez and Brodus Clay, the old fumble to the ground. Good sell from Brodus Clay because he didn't really get connected that much from Del Rio, but he did manage to sell it quite well, I thought. And then Christian manages to go up there and get the belt. And then it was a nice little moment when Edge just like runs to the ring and he just climbs up onto the open, but then he like sits there like a child on the edge of the open and just watches his long time friend Christian grab the title. And it must have been like a really nice moment for them both to just share that together, I suppose. And then, um, yeah, Christian's the new champion and we're all going mental because, yeah, Christian's finally won that belt and it was quite good. It, it didn't seem as good as I thought it was going to be, though. Like, I thought it would have been a lot better. They could have made it a lot better. Well, not a little bit better because it was very good, I thought. What am I saying? It was very good. Uh, next up, we got another bonus match. Kane and the Big Show to defend their WWE Tag Team titles in a Lumberjack match against two members of the core, but not the two that you're thinking of. It wasn't Justin Gabriel and it wasn't Heath Slater. It was Wade Barrett and Ezekiel Jackson. Um, a pretty good match for a lumberjack match. I'm, I don't know if I'm just uh, easily pleased at the moment because I've not really watched that much wrestling lately. Well, I've watched it. I've caught up with it all, but I've not really watched any live, apart from this for the last like three weeks. I don't know if that's why I'm easily pleased. But yeah, I, I was really pleased with this match. Um, Kane and Show got the win. Um, Ezekiel Jackson managed to slam the Big Show, which was impressive. Then. Um, Blind tag from Wade Barrett onto the back of Ezekiel Jackson. He comes in, goes to a wastelands him, can't do it, gets choke slammed and gets the fin gets the pin on him. And then all the lumberjacks start fighting and then Slater and Gabriel run into the ring and both get choke slammed. Oh one thing I forgot to say about the Christian Del Rio match, there's a great spot where Christian was about to get the title and Broder Clay just ran down to the ring, swept the ladder out from under him. Christian's holding onto the the hoop that holds onto the title, and then he falls right into Brodus Clay's arms, and Brodus Clay just caught him as if he was nothing, put him on his back, and they struggled around a little bit, and he struggled to continue it. But that one catch, where he just caught him, he must have fallen like a fair few feet, caught him really strongly. It was a like really impressive show of, uh, of strength, basically from Brodus Clay. I was really impressed with that. And um, but yeah, onto the main event. John Cena won the world title in a cage match against Miz and John Morrison. This was a really good match as well. I've got to say, overall, the card was fantastic. I really enjoyed this show. I don't know about any of you lot, like what you thought of it, but I really enjoyed this show. Uh, the main event. I wasn't one, I wasn't expecting Cena to win. I was expecting Miz to retain. But yeah, Cena got the win by getting an attitude adjustment off the top rope, which is quite similar to how. Um, the Art and Punk match finished with a RK off the top rope, but you know it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, it was really impressive. Um, John Morrison almost escaped the cage at one point, but then our truth came down, gave him a bit of a beat, and then our truth went walked into the cage and then climbed out of it, sort of like symbolic. Like I could have won it if I was in this match. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, there was an awful spot. Well, not an awful spot, an awfully cringeworthy spot where. Uh, Cena and John Morrison suplexed, <coughs> double suplexed Miz into the ring and he like landed on his neck and it was one of those moments where you're like oh what's happened there is, is he alright uh, I'm not a big fan of the Miz but I wouldn't want to see him hurt like that it's like, quite harsh but yeah he was he was alright and he managed to take the big bump from Cena at the end of the match so yeah he should be fine and uh, yeah overall it was a fantastic card like, I w I'm really surprised at how good this show actually was I would rate I, I do highly rate this show and it's Probably my favourite pay-per-view of the year so far, and <coughs> I won't be surprised by the end of the year if this was the one that was um, overall best. Also, could it be a new direction for WWE? Could WWE, are they starting to make themselves better? I don't know. Is the draft really, has it really mixed things up so well that they can start to do more things with the wrestlers? I'm not too sure. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see where WWE is going. I'm really excited to see Raw tonight. And obviously the big news in the world right now is Osama Bin Laden has been announced that he's dead, they've announced that they've killed him and they buried him at sea, which is a, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth, it's the American, uh, the Americans who are reporting this, so have they just killed him, how long has he been dead, who knows, I don't really care, he's dead, that's nothing to do with me is it, it's just some bloke I've seen off the telly, but yeah, um, as far as I'm concerned, Extreme Rules was a fantastic pay-per-view. I'd like to know what you thought of it, because I, I, I am actually genuinely interested in what everyone thinks of this pay-per-view, because I really did enjoy it. Did everyone else enjoy it as much as me? I'd like to know. And yeah, please comment below. Uh, if you like my videos, hit the subscribe button up there. If, also, if you like my videos, click the previous a and button and the next a and button to go to my last and next videos, because they'll be up there. And um, yeah, with that, I'm out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.